Hi folks, I'm Richard Friedman and welcome to my political cartoon countdown for October 2nd, 2021. Every week we get together or so, sometimes two weeks, so whatever it is, we get together and we do the political cartoon countdown based on impressions on Twitter, most popular cartoon. And uh, for this week, before we get started, I always like to do kind of like a flashback and uh, give you a kind of a glimpse of what happened uh, a year, sometimes two, sometimes three years ago from one of my books. So for this week, uh, this, this is the, the 2020 book from last year. Here. Okay, by the way, if you want to purchase the book, you could go on my website, which is Richard's, no apostrophe S, yes, just plain Richard's Books of Political Cartoons.com, no spaces. And you can get it from the link or you can go to Amazon, direct to Amazon uh, there and, and purchase the book. And uh, this is from 2020. Okay, it's a good uh, kind of like a political cartoon encyclopedia because it has all the events and everything like that. And you get the, you get the joke and you get the info from what happened last year and the, and the incidents. And you can kind of piece it all together to see where we're going. So here's the, uh, here's a cartoon from October 6, 2020. Okay. President Trump had just come back from uh, the hospital and he's back at the White House. And there he is from the balcony. And there's Rudy Giuliani up there, down there, I should say, speaking to the former, then President Trump. And again, this is October 6, 2020, just a year ago. Okay, and the background here is Trump tells his longtime friend and sometimes lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, that he hopes that by beating the virus, he will, quote, he, quote, will be able to show people we can deal with the disease responsibly, but we shouldn't be afraid of it. Giuliani's conceivable response to having watched the president return to the White House and remove his mask, despite having COVID-19, to pose for photos from the balcony above, the South Lawn of the White House. Okay, so that's that. There it is. And there's Rudy there. Former President, then President, let's say, then President Trump with his thumbs up. There's Rudy in the back. And he's saying, that's showing them, Donald. On 9-11, I took my mask off, too, and nobody got sick from me. So he was down there. I, mean, I got to give Rudy a lot of credit for those days during 9-11 when he walked the streets of New York. You know, and I, I'm from New York myself, originally from the Bronx. And I saw that. I said, thank goodness New York has a good mayor to handle this, this thing, you know. I really said that to myself. And he was then as, as mayor. You know, walking through the streets, you know, and, I, and he, he, he did take off his mask. So, but he didn't have, there was no such thing as COVID then. There was no such thing, no such animal as COVID-19 COVID in those days, you know. So he, uh, he's trying, again, supporting uh, now the former president, former president Donald Trump from, from, from this. He's kind of giving him, him thumbs up for, for being heroic and, and taking his mask off and in his, uh, in Trump world, let's just say. Okay, okay, so here's a trip back to Trump world here. Okay, that was a year ago, 2020. Now, this is my current book, the greatest, the greatest 21, 21 book of political cartoons, edition one, January through June. There'll be, hopefully if we're still around, I'm still around. There'll be another book coming out in uh, in, Jan in January 
for this for these past six months. And here is the cover there, the Capitol. You can see all the players here, the political. I always I don't want to be repetitious, so I'm not going to get into naming it. But you can figure it out. You know, from looking here. Here's Rudy again, I'll, since we just spoke about Rudy. Here he is. That's the uh, the dye from the, his hair dye coming down. Next to him is Ted Cruz. Behind him, Marco Rubio. Here's Lindsey Graham on the bongo drums and Chuck Grassley playing the violin. Here we go, Bernie, Bernie Sanders. Okay. Here's Nancy Pelosi. Okay. Ghost of Nixon, okay, there we have it. That was my last book. And going flashback, this is the 20, this is from edition one of uh, 2019. Okay, this is edition two of 2019. The White House in the background. And this is my first book, which goes all the way back to the candidates of 2016, including the Democrats. Can you see that? There we go. Okay. Just a well, we'll get that another time. So there you have all my books there, and let, let's get started on the countdown. Okay, numero cuatro para la semana, que pasado. Number four of the week here. Here we have, you can see, Fox News Sunday with Chris Wallace and Here's Chris Wallace, okay, and there's Governor Greg Abbott of Texas. Now, the thing going, what's going on here is that, is that Greg Abbott has basically uh, initiated uh, a bill into the Texas legislature special session to, to do a recount of the 2020 uh, elect, presidential election. Now, it's it's kind of implicit here that President Trump kind of uh, was encouraging encouraged him to do so to say to to, under, to understate it. You know, there's a little understatement there because he, it's a documented letter that he wrote uh, explaining his reasoning, and uh, it, was, it wasn't for the whole state of Texas. Now, <clears throat> I believe it was only four counties, two of which he won, and two of which he lost. So maybe he, he picked it out mathematically to make it look a little uh, to make it look a little kosher there. Two and two I won, two I lost. So what can you say, you know? But the, the bottom line is, you can't deny it. Former President Trump won Texas, so that ain't going to change anything, because if if if, if, if you do the recount, you're going to spend all that money, and you're not going to find out. He or he, you know, I mean, with those four counties. Or, or he won two, and, 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 and so two that he, he won, and the two counties that uh, it's not going to change anything. He still won, he doesn't want to, you know, it ain't going to, it's not going to change anything. See, the only two counties that he lost, and if he changed votes on those two counties, that's not going to, that's not, that's not going to change the, the vote in Texas, you know. Uh, I don't think that's going to change the state, two counties in Texas, you know. The Yellow Rose of Texas, that's a big state, two counties, 
ain't going to change nothing. So the only two counties that he's probably could could have something to say about are the two that he lost, right? So how many counties are there in Texas? So well, it's like spinning, you know, spinning the wheels, you know, and, and my view. Anyway, I don't want to give you my view. I want you to form your own view. But I give you the, the facts and, and the joke, and then you decide. That's what I always say. So here, here we have um, Fox News Sunday with Chris Wallace and, and uh, Governor, Republican Governor Greg Abbott, who is uh, basically a Trump loyalist. He's been loyal to the former, to the former president. And so uh, here we go with the cartoon. Okay, I'll kind of read it to you here. On Fox News Sunday with Chris Wallace, Texas Governor Greg Abbott defends his sudden decision to add election audit bill to Texas legislature's special session. Okay, they're having a special session. Sounds like they're going to have a special session to deal with this. Sounds like, but I ain't seeing that. Okay, given former President Trump won Texas and there has been no evidence of widespread fraud in the state. And in a published letter, Trump said, Texans have big questions about the November 2020 election. Well, if they have big questions then, and Trump won the state, well, I guess they're thinking Trump lost the state. <laughs> I mean, that's what they have questions about, or the whole, the whole thing, the whole, he's talking about the whole election. So he wants to take a, say, find two counties, and say basically on two counties, the, the, whole, the whole election should be, should be changed to, 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 to restore him as President of the United States, I don't think that's going to fly too well, but anyway, I mean, okay, so you, you decide. Okay, so Texas, question, and time is running out to conduct an audit of the 2020 presidential scam, okay? So he's talking about the, the, uh, the, the states that he lost, basically, the, the, the scam, the states he lost, okay, in his, in his view. Putting pressure on Abbott, Governor Abbott, Abbott's pro, now here we go, Abbott, Abbott's private thoughts before he responded to Chris Wallace's question. So he, he thought he had his thoughts, and then he responded to, Chris, to Governor Chris to, go, to Governor Greg Abbott. Okay, so I'm, that's what I've put here. Putting pressure on Abbott. Abbott's private thoughts and what he actually did say in response to Wallace's question on the Texas quote audit. Okay. Okay. So here is it's Chris Wallace, okay, and Governor Abbott, Greg Abbott, Republican Governor of Texas. Okay. Now, here goes Chris. Isn't this audit a terrible waste of taxpayer money? And then, this is it. This is Greg Abbott thinks to himself. No, because Texans need my strong leadership, and in 2022 they want me reelected to a third term. He's running for reelection in 2022. Governor Abbott is. They want me to a third term, and. And they sure as hell don't want Donald Trump to support my primary challenges. He's having, he's having Republican challenges, two Republican challenges, who are very, also very loyal to former President Trump, Trump loyalists, let's say, who are just a pair of Trump puppets. Okay, they're Trump puppets, you know? So, so, and then he goes on. This is his actual answer. This is what he did say in response to uh, Chris Wallace. On Fox News Sunday, this is what he did actually say word for word, and you know, abbreviated in terms of not the entire, can't put the entire response, but this is basically what he said. No, this is a worthwhile pursuit. There are audits of every aspect of government. You no, know, we do audits of everything. We order, we order how much toilet paper we use in, in the Capitol. We order how much, do, how much of this and that, how much, how much uh, we, spend on, we spend on extermination, uh, uh, for, for extermination and this and that and this and that. So we, why shouldn't we order this, you know? That's what he's saying. You know, the bottom line here, this is, this is a done deal, you know? You know? Toilet, toilet paper and exterminators 
coming in to kill the roaches and stuff like that. That's 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 ongoing. But this is this is this is this is history already, you know. So he wants to, and it wouldn't even if he came up with something, it wouldn't change anything. But he feels it's a good pursuit because it happens all the time. So here you go. Fox News Sunday with Chris Wallace interviewing Republican governor and Trump loyalist Greg Abbott. Thumbs up. Okay. Okay, numero tres de la semana number three. See if you can guess who that is. That's a, a Republican Representative Liz Cheney up there and former President Trump watching her on the screen. Okay. Now, former President Donald Trump watches Representative Liz Cheney, Republican Wyoming, apologize to General Mark Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, for what she called despicable questions from those members of this committee who've done so. So there were a lot of, I, I, I think they, they were all Republicans who, who have a little favoritism towards former President Trump. I mean, that would fall in line. I, I don't really know exactly who did the questioning, but I would, I think it's kind of implicit that that was the case, you know? You know, because the thing with, with Mark Milley and the book and all that business. So they want to stick it to Milley real good now. <laughs> it sounds that way to me. But anyway, you decide. I'll give you the facts here, okay? Then in the wake of the former president saying, if it is true, true that General Milley called China and was willing to advise them of an attack or in advance of an attack, that's treason. Well, it turns out that the Chinese were a little bit worried about after January 6th what happened there, and they were a little bit worried uh, that, uh, that the former president might uh, pull the, push the button, you know, and, and launch some stuff, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> perhaps aimed at them, you know. <laughs> so, so they were a little worried about that, and so um, um, Mark Milley must have got wind of it through, you know, the chit-chats and all that, that they, everybody chit-chats and they listen, chit-chat here, chit-chat there, you know. So, so he wanted to assure the Chinese that we wouldn't run in, that they, they wouldn't have to be concerned about that. And then he did say st things like, if there were an attack, if we decide, we'll let you know. So, I mean, we'll let you know, <laughs> I mean, that's it. So, so you could attack up, you could attack us too, and then we're all we're all ancient history, you know. Though, <laughs> well, anyway, so um, well, well, I mean, the question came down to: Would well, you want to have run the risk of that happening, or do you want to go? And 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 it turns out that uh, General Milley was in his his rights under the parameters of the Constitution to to do what he did as head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. It was his constitutional uh, right and perhaps obligation to do what he did to prevent a, a, a nuclear war. I mean, how could you argue with trying to prevent a nuclear war? I mean, <laughs> you know, you, you, you can't sit down after nuclear war and say, well, okay, let's have a, let's have a debate about this after the nuclear war is over. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> the time to, the time that you got, you know, so I say this, Ronald Reagan once said, even uh, giving, going, going in, like the plan of the devil's Abbey, going to the other direction, and saying, even if it's a, ba a bad decision in time is worse than a good decision too late. Well, I think Ronald Reagan said that. So, I mean, even pouring everything you could say. So, um, and generals, you know, reputable generals have come out in support of General Miller. So, I mean, well, anyway. So here we got we got here now the the only one of the the uh, uh, you know Liz Cheney is the only one here who spoke up who said this was wrong to to question at the kind of questions the way they questioned and, and persecutory questions I would assume they were I didn't hear them so I can't comment on that but 
General Milley, you found yourself in, in your prescribed constitutional role. This is despicable, the questions. And then former tre President Trump watching here, and he's getting, he wants to throw the whole screen into the garbage can along with Liz Cheney. You know, he's ready to take that thing down and, and throw it somewhere, you know, perhaps. Liz Cheney up there. And former President Trump goes, Liz Cheney, your disloyalty to the Republican Party. Now, former President Trump has called uh, Representative Cheney disloyal because of the things that she doesn't go along with, the, with the, uh, the, the big steal, the election was stolen, and other things. She doesn't go along with that, so she's not loyal to the Republican Party. So this is, this is the umbrella. Everything is under the Republican Party. If, you don't, if you're not loyal to former President Trump, you're not loyal to the Republican Party. Or you could be said not to be loyal to the Trump Republican Party by former President Trump, who carries a big stick in terms of getting Republican votes. So there you go. Okay, Liz Cheney, you're, so right and wrong is, developed, is determined by votes, not by right or wrong, <laughs> apparently, in the Republican Party. Okay, Liz Cheney, your disloyalty to the Republican Party and America is despicable. You need to apologize to those loyal, courageous, and patriotic members, you would have given General Benedict Arnold a medal for contacting the British. This was during the Revolutionary War. Benedict Arnold went ahead. I, he, I read a little bit about him. He was dissatisfied that they didn't advance him enough. He didn't get enough uh, promotions in the U.S. military, and he was very, very upset about that. So he figured he could, give, he could advance further in the British, in the British Army. In the, in the British uh, intelligence or whatever, so he switched sides and became like a, I think, a double agent or something like that, an agent for the, uh, for the, for the British. So, um, you know, and worked for the British and traitor of the country. That's why the expression goes, you know, Benedict Arnold. So, anyway, uh, the thing is that uh, he's saying here that that Liz Cheney would give Benedict Arnold a medal, and then and then he has the last thought here. He says, lucky for America, you were a little girl then, back then in, in 1780. You were just a small little girl back then. <laughs> Liz. And so, you know, throwing in a, another, another jab at her. Okay, there it is. Former President Trump, Liz Cheney. Okay. Numero dos de la semana. Here we have Bernie Sanders, and here's Trump, uh, former President Trump, watching Bernie on the TV screen here. Now he's giving thumbs up to Bernie. Okay. You never hear Trump going against Bernie. You never hear that. Okay. Former President Donald Trump watches Senator Bernie Sanders demand House Democrats to vote against the Senate passed bipartisan infrastructure bill of $1.2 trillion until Congress approves a $3.5 trillion human infrastructure bill that includes anti-poverty measures and climate action. So Bernie here was saying that no deal on the, the infrastructure, $1.2 trillion infrastructure, let people, people want to crash on, on bridges, that's okay, but it, it, it's gonna, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do nothing with that bill, we're not gonna pass it, uh, our, progress, our progressives are not gonna pass that bill in, in the House, and we're not gonna do it until we get our 3.5, which is down from six, we originally want six, we're giving you a discount, we're, we're lowering it to 3.5, you know, that's his, that's his view. And then Bernie says here, just Trump is catching here, this 1.2 is our leverage. No, it's our leverage is if we have leverage to get to 3.5, we could sit on the 1.2, you know, the, the infrastructure deal, 
and we got the leverage here. We can use that leverage, that's leverage, to get our three point, oh, as close to 3.5 as we can get. Right now, I think they're talking about, um, I know Joe Manchin, I think he came out with a, a 1.5, and he's going to stick to that 1.5 now. And then some people say, okay, we'll go 2.1. And then this side says, they, they probably, some people, perhaps, I'm not quite sure of that, say maybe we'll go 2.1, and then this and that, back and forth. You know, what I like to know is who's paying for all this stuff. You know, they're talking about all these hundreds of you know, all these millions of dollars and billions. Who's, who's paying for this and how are decisions made? We don't get to hear about that. We don't get to hear that. Okay, we'll take a million dollars from this. We'll put it here. We'll put that. You know, and, and who's gonna, how are we going to finance this? And the Republicans say, well, look, uh, we can't afford this business. And Democrats say, well, you were afforded the, the, the mighty uh, Trump uh, tax cuts for the rich that cost trillions and trillions of dollars that I think was about, about one-third of the, of the debt that, that the former president ran up in his term of office, maybe more than one-third, perhaps a little bit more, maybe it was one-third of the debt that he ran up, maybe. Something like that. It, it was a good chunk of the debt that former President Trump ran up was that got that uh, tax cut to the rich. So who's going who's gonna to really, uh, who, now they, they, they need, the, and the Republicans say, well, I ain't going to move on that. So that, that the idea was for President Biden came out with a, with a plan to, 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 to raise the taxes on the, 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 the power elite, you know, the, 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 real, the, the, well, the real true wealthy, wealthy people. But the Republicans don't want to do that. And then the, the Democrats say, well, we still want our 3.5, even if it adds to the, to, to the debt and we don't do that. So, so every, nobody, nobody is coming down at the grassroots of how we're going to make the money and how we're going to make it work. And I'd like somebody, I'd like two questions for Republicans to answer. One question for Republicans and one question for the Democrat. Why can't the Republicans lower, what, what, for what reasoning can you, can't you raise uh, taxes on the, the, the upper rich people and the corporations and all that business. What's the reasoning behind that that's so crucial for our economy and crucial to them? What's the reasoning? Be, uh, and then and for the Democrats, what's the reasoning on the $3.5 trillion if you can't pay for it because you don't have the tax cuts? So where does this get the United States? Where does this get a little kid, a kid who's born today, uh, who's born tomorrow, and he's growing up in a world where he, he may never get Social Security because of these decisions. Where does that get him, you know? You know? People, people always worry uh, the rights of uh, this. Uh, where are the rights of, of this child who's born to tomorrow? Where are his rights? Who's thinking about that? He's he thinking about the moment, you know? Nobody's trying to, to think logically here. Everybody's saying, well, I'm with the Democrats, I'm with the Republicans, we've got to stick together, and meanwhile, who who is who is uh, who's who's calling who is uh, who is balancing the balance sheet? Who who's who's really looking at the numbers here? Nobody's looking at the numbers. It's like the plane is on automatic pilot, and everybody's arguing where they want to go, and nobody and nobody's flying the plane. Oh, I want to go to Florida. I want to go. I want to go to to Alaska, and and nobody knows where the hell the plane's going to go. <laughs> That's what it's like here, you know, because. If you listen, you sit down with the money, you show the American people the money. Here, we got this money for this, this money for that, this money for this, this money for that. We're going to take that, that. We're going to take a little from the rich here, give to this program, and that. Then we're going to do that. Oh, I'll take two billion. I'll take five hundred billion. I'll take six hundred billion. You know, it's like it's like well, 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 it's like an auction. You know, <laughs> you know, you go watch an auction. That's what it's like. So I wish people would think, start thinking about what what they're doing. You know, and and, and come up and show the American people where their reasoning is. Why can't you give, uh, uh, a, why can't you raise taxes? What's the reason? Will there be an economic disaster? Will prices go up? Will, will people lose their jobs if we put more taxes? And then again, if we don't pass the 3.5 trillion and, and don't pass nothing and let the 1.2 trillion guy and all the bridges fall apart, what's gonna happen then? So, so everybody's looking, playing like, it's like, it's like uh, a, uh, that people are more concerned about their own parties and their own affiliates and, and getting re elected and getting financed than they are about the little kid who's going to be born tomorrow or today.
who's going to grow up in a world where America may not someday have to really default on their, uh, really default because there won't be no more money to pay it. And nobody's going to loan it to us, you know? Because if we keep doing this and, and all the things that go on here with this country uh, and we keep fighting among ourselves, you think anybody's going to want to loan us money, you know? So, I mean, just, it's not like a machine that gets printed money up and then you got the money comes out and, and the money is accountable, you know? So that's what I'm saying here. You think about it, and that's all I want to say to you about that, you know? I don't change nobody's head about it. So we should be thinking and we should be getting the numbers and finding and learning more, and they should be thinking about what they're doing instead of doing these reflex reactions, you know, kicking this guy, kicking that guy, and a lady or whatever, and, and not thinking about what are we doing, you know? There's no, there's no like, uh, there's no thinking apparatus here. It's just, it's just a, a kick, kick back and forth, and everybody thinking about their constituents. That's the word, constituents. Okay, here we go. So that's it here. And here goes President Trump. Love this Bernie, even more than Kim Jong-un. Whether this fake 3.5 bill passes or not, it's my leverage to another third great victory in 2024. So former President Trump probably sees this, all this stuff, that, that no matter how it goes down, he's still going to look, he's going to look a whole lot better come 2024 after all this business, you know. Got to find Bernie a position to F dot dot up the liberals. So he's going to find Bernie a position in his new administration in 2024 to, to mess up all those liberals there, you know. He could put Bernie in some sort of progressive uh, office of some kind of a, of a you know, you know, sort of like a token position, you know. <laughs> you know. So anyway, uh, you know, Secret Secretary of the Poor People. Bernie could be like Secretary for, for the, of the Poor People. Bernie Sanders, I'm going to create a new position, Secretary of the Poor People. Bernie Sanders is now Secretary of the Poor People. Okay? That's what. But people don't realize this, that, that, that everybody can't be brain surgeons, everybody can't be engineers. Somebody has got to do this work. And that's why maybe perhaps God created that, that everybody has different talents, different things, and different positions. So where, where could we do? What would be if everybody were doctors, lawyers, and everything like that? You couldn't call up a doctor, lawyer, engineer, arbitrage. Somebody does arbitrage in the business world, or, or a trader, or anybody, then ask him to come over and fix the toilet. You know, you'd have to fix it yourself. You know, or if you have any kind of thing. So when everybody's, what's, that's the, that every, everybody's important in this world. Everybody's important. You know? So that's, that's the kind of thing here. You know? So anyway. There it is. That was Bernie Sanders up there, and and Trump giving him th thing, thumbs up. You know, my new secretary of poor people, Bernie Sanders, can be secretary of the poor in the in the next Trump administration. You know, they'll probably give him some finger paint. You know, <laughs> to, for the children. <laughs> oh, whatever. All right. Okay, so here is Numero Uno de la Semana, number one of the week. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in here on former President Trump in the office, when he was in his office, then President Trump here. Okay, okay. Oh, no, 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 this is, this is, um, all right, here is, so here's what happens here. Here we go. Here's a golf cart with Lindsey Graham. Okay. 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 No, I assume here uh, that this was this was this is way back when uh, when Lindsey Graham uh, uh, had said this. This was from the book. This was from the book. You see, what this is coming out of a, a book that was written about the. Uh, the, uh, the Trump presidency in, in the days following the January 6th uh, Capitol riot. So after that, this is in the context of that, while President Trump is still president. And this is relayed in the book, What Happened Here with Lindsey Graham, immediately following the Capitol riot. So there you have it here, okay? So here, here we got Putting Lindsey Graham on the phone here, and there's former President Trump, then then President Trump, in the Oval Office. 
and former President Trump on the golf course. Okay, and there is Lindsay in the golf court giving President Trump a Diet Coke with the, with the, with the uh, golf cart case, with the uh, golf, with the, from a golf cart case. Okay. Okay, and here's how this goes. Former President Trump reportedly hung up the phone on, as I said, reportedly from the book, hung up the phone on Lindsey Graham after the Senate told him, quote, this is a direct quote, you fucked your presidency up, quote, unquote. Given reportedly the two men spoke again the next day, and Graham told Trump he didn't blame him for hanging up. Their second, tel is a te this is a second telephone conversation. Lindsey got a little worried here, what he did, you know, and so he, it's just like when Lindsey got, gets upset, sometimes he throws his phone around, remember that, those days when he, he took apart his cell phone after Trump gave out his phone number, and he smashed his phone all over the place, he did a video on that, so sometimes Lindsey gets a little worked up, you know, gets a little bit excited, so we got a little excited here, instead of throwing his phone uh, at, at, at Pre President Trump, he was, he was on the telephone, so he said that to him. And then he worried, oh man, what have I done? <laughs> you know, this is this is this is our Republican Party here, former President Trump. He is he's the man here of the Republican Party. Oh man, I gotta call him back. You know, I you know, I can't say I'm sorry because President Trump don't take no prisoners. So I gotta just figure out a way here. So he called him back. This is the second conversation, okay? So here we go. President Trump does not take any prisoners, and that's going through his mind here, how to talk to, and now he's, he's, he's on the phone, making a second call, after telling then, then President Trump, you F dot dot, up your presidency, and now he's trying to make amends, okay, and there he is, okay, Mr. President, I don't blame you for hanging up on me, I was just letting out my frustration because of how vital you are to the future of our fantastic party. And wow. then here's former President Trump in the Oval Office responding. Then, I should say then President Trump, because then he was president. So let's just say then President Trump. Then President Trump responding. Lindsay, without my fantastic genius, the Republican Party has no future. You know, it's, you, Lindsay's talking about the future without there's no future. You know, really, but he wants in the future. He's vital to the future. But he, for president, then President Trump is saying, Lindsay, there is no future for the Republican Party without me. And then here we have Lindsay responding again. He's, he's sticking on message here. He's staying on message. And he says, very true, Mr. President. We cannot move forward without you. I look forward to our next golf get-together. Lindsay likes to go down and golf with the former, with then President Trump. They did a lot of golfing together on the golf course. We saw, we saw a lot of that, uh, of, you know, we saw Lindsay on the golf course with, with then President Trump many times. So he's now trying to buddy up and looking forward to a, a, a rendezvous on the golf course again. And then, and then here goes uh, for then President Trump. Then President Trump says, Lindsay, See you at my West Palm Beach Golf Club. President, then President, he still has a, a, a club out there in West Palm Beach, as my F dot dot caddy. So, so Lindsay's going to be the caddy, you know, you know, for for then President Trump. So he's going to, if he wants to come, he has to he has to be a, the caddy. He's not going to golf with him no more. He's going to be the caddy, ca drive his caddy around, give him his diet cokes, and and the golf clubs. And stuff like that. And here is, and here is the, uh, here he is as the caddy. Here's Lindsay as then President Trump's caddy with the golf clubs in the back, the golf, the golf bag there. And he's taking out Diet Coke and he's saying, here he is. Yes. There's then President Trump on the golf course and he's saying to Lindsay, who's getting up to give him his Diet Coke, you know. There he is, the 
golf clubs in the back. He took out the Diet Coke. He's walking over to then President Trump with the Diet Coke. And Lindsay, get me a Diet Coke out of my golf bag. And there he goes with the, with the Diet Coke. Yeah, there he is. Reach for it in that golf bag, in that golf bag, and he, there he is. And that's that. This was not numero uno de la semana. Okay, there's Lindsay making it, initiating the phone call. Trump and then President Trump in the Oval Office speaking to him. Then President Trump on the golf course. And Lindsey Graham as the caddy. Lindsey Graham as the caddy, you know? Like, like, like Jerry Lewis is the caddy of the movie. Jerry Lewis is the caddy. Well, this is, this is Lindsey Graham as the caddy to then President Trump with the golf clubs in the back, golf bag taking out the Diet Coke, and there he is, stepping down, okay, on the green. There. All right, folks, I want to thank you very much for watching my uh, video this afternoon or whenever you're watching it, and uh, you take care of yourselves, stay well, and I know better days are coming, and I know we're going to beat this uh, this virus, will, well, I, I don't think we'll ever go back to normal completely, but we'll get as close as we can get. And we just, we just hang in there. And um, I hope they work things out in, uh, in Congress and come up with a reasonable um, negotiated uh, agreement that makes sense for America, you know? And, and, and one thing is important is that no party should claim victory here they should all get together after this is over and just say, well, we did the best we could and, here's, and show us some of the numbers and show us the, what, what's going to happen and where the money's going to go and how this is going to work. Because if to, you're leaving us in the dark, just like if you had an accountant, you say, and you had an accountant, let's say, and, and he did your work for you, you know? So the, the, the government is like the America's accountant. And, and, the, and the accountant says, well, we, I worked it, everything is great, you don't have to worry about nothing. Just go on your business, you know, and pay, instead of, say, instead of paying the bill to the county, you say, just pay your taxes and you got nothing to worry about, and, you know, and everything. But, uh, uh, sir, uh, Mr. CPA, you know, Mr. CPA, my CPA, can I see the, 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 the numbers here? What is, no, I don't worry about that. It's all worked out. You got no problem, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing here. The government is the accountant here, and they have an agreement. And, and so where is, where is the... Where is the beef? Where is, where is what's going here? This is going for this, this is going for that, this is going for this, that's for all. We're going to do this, we did that. We cut, we cut taxes from, from the wealthy people here a little bit and maybe bring them down to where they were during the Bush era. You know, that's not too, that wasn't too bad then, you know? And maybe, and maybe, maybe cut a few things here that we, things like that, you know? You know, I mean, I mean, it would, it would be great, a great world if we could send every, if we could give every kid a ticket to Disneyland, and every say, kid in America I say, well, you can go to Disneyland. It's not fair that some kids go to Disneyland five, six times, and some kids never get to Disneyland or Disney World. You know, it's Disneyland on the, on, on the East Coast, Disney World. No, it's Disney World on the East Coast, Disneyland on the West Coast. So, you know, I mean, it's not fair. Some kids go five, six times, and, they, and they're wealthy parents and everything, and some kids never, never get to Disney. Never get to Disneyland or you know, Disney World or wherever on the east or west. So, so that's not fair either. So we can't, we can't, we don't have enough money, unfortunately, to give every kid a ticket to Disneyland or Disney World. But we got to do something to keep the to keep the people to keep the people sustained and, and and going. We can't let people fall into the streets and be begging on the street and have nothing. What what the 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 you know. They, 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 we can't, the Republicans say, Stonewall, we can't touch the, the uh, taxes, you know, up there. Can't, can't do that. But they were there. They were, they were, they were, they were, all, they, all they're saying is, they're not just saying, bring it back to the way it was during the Bush era. That wasn't so bad, you know? So, anyway, folks, I want to thank you very much for watching my, my video, and uh, you take care, and I'll see you again next time. And I always say, God bless you, and God bless America.